Welcome to That Pedal Show. Dan here. Mick here. Today we're looking at compressors. Uh, there seems to be confusion out there, Mick, on how to use compressors, what they do. Uh, so I've got four of my favorites here that I thought I'd take you through and show them the difference of what they can do and what they sound and you know where to put them. So just to clarify, we did uh, a video a couple of weeks ago on compressors, but that was really in relation to how you use them with boosts and overdrives, right? Exactly, where you put them in the signal path. Um, and we got asked a bunch of different questions about you know what is the best way to use a compressor. Uh, first of all, let's just clarify what a compressor does. Okay, a compressor, um, it, it controls the dynamic range so with your guitar, if you're playing something that's you know really quiet, same thing really loud, what the compressor will do it will make the quiet notes louder and make the loud notes quieter. So if I do the same thing with a compressor on, this is the quiet one. It's the loud one. So you didn't really change volume there. So okay. if we're using compression on the mic in this room, for example, it will pick up the sound of the people running up and down the stairs. That's right. <laughs> really loud, and it will equalize that with the sound in this room. Exactly. So it'll sound like there's a herd of elephants just above us. When really there's lovely, dainty ladies walking around upstairs. <laughs> um, so that's, yeah, that's exactly right. That's what a compressor does. But uh, in, especially in guitar land, there's so many different types of compressors, uh, and they all sound different. So, first of all, look at, um, this is my old, this is an original Bud Box 1974 um, MXR Dynacop. Why is it called Bud Box? It was the enclosure, it was the Bud Box enclosure. Not that the enclosure makes any difference at all, it's just indicative of the components they were using at the time, and there's an argument to say that the Bud Box ones were using the best sounding components. Whatever. It's lovely. So, this is the guitar by itself. <laughs> Then with the MXR Dynacomp on. Okay, and we've got two amps here. Which one are we using? The We're using the Mallard. Um, this is an 18 watt Marshall clone. And then we have, of course, my Lazy J J20. The, the Lazy J compresses very early on. Okay, whereas this is a little bit more open sounding. Yes, okay. The, the Mallard by itself. Now, if I put the compressor on that. Okay, now, there was a level change as well because I was attacking quite hard. But again, if I go quite softly, then into the mellow. So, I'll tell you what I noticed there. Tell me what you noticed there, Nick. So when you played first off mm -hmm. uh, and you were playing quietly, the when you turned the compressor off, your original signal was much louder. Mm -hmm. And then when you played quietly with the compressor on, it was bringing the level up exactly. to equal out the volume. So exactly. you, you've demonstrated the fact that the compressor could not only boost, but it can also bring... Exactly. So you've... So you've demonstrated that the compressor can not only squash, but it can also bring the level up as yeah, well. Yeah, so it's limiting the amount of... of that dynamic range we're talking about before, but then anything that comes in at a low level of that, it brings it up as well. So this is done using transistors, like really old uh, transistors. Whereas what we'll move on to now is this um, Opti compressor by Dinosaurial. I've turned quite a few people onto these, lovely compressor, and it's optical. So instead of being done with transistors, this uses what we call a light dependent resistor and an optical circuit that so uses light. And what that gives it is a smoother response, whereas the um, MXR might uh, squash it really far. Whereas the way that Dinosaur will handle that, very nice. Um, the MXR is quite a dark sounding compressor, it sounds really great with Telecasters especially, um, but the Dinosaur is much brighter. So would you think about different musical uses for those different responses? Not, they both sound great. All I would say is it's really down to the player and the way that it responds. So for example, if we have listened to that through the, the SG, so first of all we'll try the, the, um, 
the Dynaco the um, MSR Dynacomp out. Okay, and that's quite squishy. Now we'll go on to the optical one. Yeah, so it's a little bit brighter, so it might work better for that guitar. I, the, the, for me, if I'm using a Telecaster, the, the old Dynacomp is just, I love it, it's fantastic. But I don't like it for much else, to mm -hmm. be honest. I think there's just a specific sound. It sounds fantastic. To be honest, I don't like it with much else. Mm -hmm. If I've got a gig that I'm using a range of guitars, I'll have a different compressor. But if I'm just using a Telecaster for a certain thing, I'll always crack that out because it sounds great. I want to hear it with a Strat. Okay. Because these strings are pretty dead on that guitar. Right. I'm ashamed to say. So let's, uh, here's one I made earlier. Nice. The strings are slightly less dead. On... <laughs> Remember kids, change your strings. Okay, That's so... Better. Let's go for the Dynacomp again. So it's quite a, not harsh, but it's a very dramatic sounding compressor. Whereas if we tried the optical compressor, Just attacks differently and it just seems to work better. Yeah, it's track. interesting, you know, because when we when we had the SG plugged in just a second ago, it everything just sounded dark and kind of it, it's almost like now I'm gonna make a terrible generalization here, but okay. compressors seem to work really well on single coil pickups. Yeah, well that is. Go on. Well, humbuckers have a natural compression about them anyway. Um, so you're compressing a compressor, but you would set up a compressor differently with a humbucker guitar. Right. Okay you would have the compression effects a lot less and you know just use it as a gentle boost or it might also be that the sound we were getting out of that dynacomp there was it just instantly put me in mind of kind of country playing because yep. that's so immediately your brain is making all kinds of connections the pedal exactly. is the pedal is helping you make a sound that makes a sound in your brain that makes you kind of think more yeah and it's it is such a distinctive sound that Telecaster, Dynacomp, you know, careers have been made with that combination. Yeah. Now we'll look at the the exotic SP compressor. This incorporates a feature that we've seen in a few compressors of late, which is a mix control. Now what we have here, um, this, this blend knob here, um, and it lets me bl uh, sort of blend between the original signal of the guitar, there's no compression on that at all, and then blend in the amount of compression I want dramatic you know amount of compression now what that gives me if I go for like a 50 50 blend you retain that initial um, the transient response it gives it's all there but you get some chewy you get the Two things. Yep. Uh, one, I never knew that. Two, I'm going to buy one of those tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Well, th th yeah, very handy. Because my problem with compression, which I'm sure will be the same for everyone else or a lot of other people, is that it's always too much. It's always too much. Or not enough. Sure. And that goes a long way to solving that problem. So have a, you know, have, have Schwein. Pretty cliched, but once you've got it, that's that's the kind of thing you want to start sure. playing. But I would imagine with an enormous amount of overdrive, that would just be.
it's almost like, because uh, we're not at deafening volume in here, we're at sort of acceptable volume, and the feeling I get off that is of an amp that's really cranked. Yeah, because when you turn an amplifier up, it compresses naturally. The speakers, their dynamic range is reduced, yeah? And the output valves, the output stage of the amplifier, its dynamic range is reduced as well. And you have this natural air compression, which everyone loves, it's wonderful. That gives you an element mm. of that characteristic, you know, at a much more acceptable level. And just to recap, in the video we made, I think it was in week one, mm -hmm. um, position of compressor next to overdrive. Yes, so what we found <laughs> was the compressor after yeah. the overdrive. Yeah, yeah. Funnily enough though, with a compressor that you have your blend control on, if you put it before the overdrive, you'll still get that plenty of that initial response. Yeah. But you know, it's definitely one to, to try out. At the moment, we've got the overdrive before all of these compressors and the compression afterwards. Um, so leading on to the final one, when we're in Frankfurt, right? It seems so long ago. It was only last week. Yeah, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. Um, so yes, when we were in Frankfurt, Andy handed me this pedal, and he said, "Here you go. You can have this as well." And I thought, "Oh, great! You know, car Martin compressor, really nice." I didn't even know it was a new Andy Timmons signature model car ah. Martin compressor. Right? He's just, you know, in his gracious way, he's just like, you know. So that's not a scratch on the top, then. That's actually a no. It's not a scratch. It's his. <laughs> it's his um, chicken scrawl. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Andy. <laughs> but. I love this compressor. It's amazing. So, what this compressor has, and so the Carl Martin, you, you normally have the level compression threshold and response. So, the threshold is the, the, um, the level where the compression is going to kick in, okay? And the response is um, how quick it kicks in. Right, I've been to conferences, okay. and when they tell you something, they tell you it again. So let's do that. All right. So, so you've got three controls on a compressor, typically. You've well, got... normally you have five. Okay. Oh, okay. On a studio compressor, you have ratio. Yeah. All right. Which is the ratio of compression that when the, the effect enters into compression, how much it's going to compress. So, for example, if we have 50% of our signal in compression, and we compress it, we compress it at, a signal, at a ratio of one to two, then that 50% is going to be compressed one to two, so we're going to end up with 25% on top of 50%. You know what I mean? So anyway, maths, mate. Exactly. Never must so you good. have you have ratio, which is the the, the ratio of compression of the um, the effective compression amount. Yeah, and just to to be less uh, academic about it for a second, the higher the ratio, the more prominent the compression. Exactly. Right. The okay. more dramatic the compression effect. So when you're setting your uh, compression on your plugin in. Uh, whatever it is you use, logic or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, one to two is, uh, two to one is going to sound quite compressed, eight to one is going to sound extremely compressed. Exactly. Right. Okay. Whereas one to one is no compression. Yeah. Okay. So ratio, you have threshold, which is... I'm reaching mine. You, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're, we're on the edge here, people. So the, that's the amount above this threshold that's going to get compressed. You have the speed of the, of the attack. So you know, how long, how, how quickly it's going to grab that note. Mm. Then you have the release time, and then you have the level. Okay, so there's five basic controls. What the guitar compressors do is they basically round them all up to a compression that gives you that, you know, basic, you know, what you want to hear. Lots or, lots or less. And volume. Um, what the Carl Martin does, though, it's more like that studio compressor. Okay, so you've got the threshold, you've got the response, how fast it's going to, you know. Then you've got the overall compression amount, and then you have the level. But why is this thing really awesome? Because you've got you two different sides to it. So let's say I have um, my compressor just uh, on a rhythm sound. But I want a solo, then I can kick in the other side and I can...
nice. Isn't that great? So it's two compressors in one box. It's two compressors in one box. On top of this, it is remotely switchable. So I can plug a little cable into the side here and control that with G2. So I can have different that's, that's sounds. That's G2 by the gig rig. That's G2 it? by the gig rig. Who that company? The gig rig. Um, so I can have, I can switch remotely with the gig rig and okay. have two different sounds. And it's just, it's a glorious sounding thing. If we listen to that, actually, that compressor into the Lazy J, um, it's just absolutely divine. Isn't that gorgeous? It's very nice. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Um, so, you know, if we have a listen to the SP compressor, which does have that, it keeps that initial response, which mm. is really great. But what I like about the, the Carl Martin, you can be really specific about exactly where that compression is going to kick in. Yeah. Um, so, we, yeah. We spoke it. earlier, we said that the MXR uh, uses diodes. No, the MXR uses transistors. Uh, transistors. Sorry, yep. the dinosaur uses uh, light resisting, no, light dependent resistors. Well done, LDRs. very good. Sounds like a train line. Proud of you, Mick. Uh, and so, what about the uh, the SP compressor and the Carl Martin? So they're they're transistors, but the, so the SP compressor um, uses the mixer as long along with the yep. normal transistor circuit, um, and the Carl Martin compressor again. It's it's I think it's disc more discreet. Um, components, but done in a way like a proper studio yeah. compressor is. Yeah. But yeah, you know, but they all sound great, and they can all work in a particular rig. Um, but I've got to say, for me at the moment, I have the Andy Timmons one on the board because it just covers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can get lots and lots of. It sounds great with all my guitars, and that. Swapping the sides is just awesome. Okay, anyone still confused about compressors? Me? Yeah, me a bit, actually. <laughs> no. no. Much less confused. Much less confused. I think um, because they're, they're such a dynamic sounding pedal and there really is no way to get your head around it unless you, you know, you've got to spend time with them yep. and that will yield results. There is no hard or fast rule with compressors. And one of the tricks is some guys use two compressors at the same time, just to, you know, like set at a very low ratio, but what, what the first compressor doesn't catch, the second compressor normally will. Yeah. And that gives a different sound altogether. Um, but they can be fantastic. The way I explain it is, your distortion overdrive pedal is for your overdrive sound, what your compressor is for your clean sound. Okay. You know what I mean? Limits that range of dynamics, yeah. but keeps it still very clean. Okay, so we've explained um, kind of what compression is and what it does. Yep. Just to finish off, okay. I'm going to... So the, the, the compression sounds that come to mind for me are country picking yep. and a kind of a solo... Well, not a solo boost, but a, a volume boost because in addition to the compression effect, plenty of people use a compressor to give them a, a boost, right? Absolutely. So if I... Perhaps pick one of the compressors. Why don't we use the Timmons, seeing as you, you like it? Okay. Um, and if I say, okay, set me up for a really squashy country picking sound, how would you set the controls for that? Okay, so what I would do, if you just play for us. So what I'll do, if I just make sure that the threshold is low enough to grab, you know, to give it the sustain and to give it the effect, but it doesn't completely ruin your top end. So yep. just play for us. That's less. If I add in more, somewhere between the two. So make the response time quite quick. Okay, so that's 
that's quite a dramatic effect. What I'm actually going to do now is going to turn the overall compression effect down a little bit. There you go. Also, what I'll do, I will A B between the direct sound. sound with the compressor on. Nice. But now if you hear that, now that's the Strat, okay? If you hear that just with a Telecaster, you get the... Sound. That's yeah, the that's sound. the sound. That's the sound. You know what I mean? This, and yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's move on from there. Um, okay. So what we've got there is quite a bit of compression, mm -hmm. or a reasonable amount of compression. Um, if you were going to change that from being a kind of picky, kind of squashy sound to a bold boost, a bold boost. How okay. would you? How would you change? Okay, so for the bold boost. Shall we st so stay in this compressor so we can see the... Yeah, the I mean, okay, I'm going to um, let me do a neck pickup sound. So this is, this, is, uh, this is where we were, but on the neck pickup. Okay. So now that we're on the neck pickup, the compressor is going to sound completely different. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're doing a big bolsa, a lot of the time you are going to be in the neck pickup. Okay, it's a much rounder sound. So yeah. we, we need to make sure that we don't get rid of all the top end. As we do, like we're doing the funky thing on the bridge pickup, yeah. you know, we can be a lot more drastic with those compression settings. So what we'll do, if you just play your neck pickup for us. So I'm going to slow down the response a little bit. Okay, so it grabs more of your initial attack. to crank up the overall level of compression. Okay, maybe just raise the threshold a little bit as well. So now, if I put the overdrive pedal on as well, which is that one. So now if we have listened to it, the overdrive pedal, without the compressor, you get this. Right, it's really nice, but we put the compressor in now. I'll tell you what's interesting, that just immediately feels it feels all at once a little bit louder, I think, because yep. it was just a touch louder. Yeah. But it felt more dynamic. It felt much more dynamic. As you, yeah. you can probably hear, I'm kind of hitting the strings quite hard and finding it a little bit difficult to play today. But that once the compressor was on, all of a sudden it's hey, silky fingers ish. Yeah. But because you're not hearing this massive discrepancy between the notes you're hitting a little bit too hard and the notes hitting a bit too soft, it just evens all that out. So yeah, it does. It feels different, and it does feel easier to play that sort of thing. So if you're doing a solo with long notes, okay? That's when 
when the compressor sort of really comes into its own. If you start doing all that sort of shenanigans, um, who does that? Some people do it. There's no money there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, the compressor is not going to have time to do what it needs to do. Yeah. Um, but when you see, so I know Dave Gilmore's a big fan of the the David. You know, sorry, David. He doesn't like Dave. Not at all. Me old covered Dave, <laughs> Davey G. Uh, but that's why when you when you hear him lean into those yeah, yeah. those that's, you know the compressor allows him to do that you know without the compressor on yeah it sounds a bit plinky plunky interesting because there's a lot of guitar players I know who are into tone and they've got a really nice amp and they've got a nice guitar and they mm -hmm. don't want to fill it full of stuff. Of course. However, getting that sustain can be a problem unless you put loads of gain on. So a compressor's a really good way to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. So what the gain does, again, it limits that dynamic response. But of course you get different harmonic overtones, a lot of mm. distortion. But the compressor will do that the input signal and, and so you don't have to crank loads of overdrive into the amplifier for that to happen so yeah they they can be fantastic fantastic okay so what have we learned there are different types of compressors yes uh they do different jobs yes having a mix knob to be able to have a mixture of your compressed sound and your non-compressed sound is really useful mm -hmm. and the new uh carl martin andy timmons compressor limiter is completely awesome it's wonderful anything i've missed um, no, I would say though, just to finish off, you hear the difference between even just the strats, yeah, single yeah. core pickup, Telecaster, both react completely differently. Take your guitar. If you've got a guitar that you love, take it, when you're trying these things out, don't go into a shop and pick a guitar off the wall. Take your guitar with you mm -hmm. and just hear how they respond. And uh, yeah, you'll, you'll find one that works really well for you. But they're, they're fantastic tools. Great, there we are. There uh, we go. Dan's 101 guide to uh, compressors. Cheers, guys. See you next time.